How much calcium should be in your pool? And what should you do if there's too much or too little? Here's everything you need to know about managing and controlling calcium harness levels in your pool. Check it out. First, what is calcium harness? Now you've probably heard the term hard water before, and it simply means that your water supply has a high level of minerals, including calcium, that can leave deposits and build up. So if your calcium harness levels in your pool are too high or even too low, it can cause damage to your pool. This includes your pool filter, your pump, your heater, and even the pool itself. That's why it's so important to monitor and balance the calcium harness levels in your pool. So, What's the correct calcium harness level? Well, if you have a pool with a vinyl liner or it's made of fiberglass, the calcium harness level should be between 175 and 225 parts per million. And if you have a concrete or plaster pool, keep the calcium levels a little higher between 200 and 275 parts per million. Now, what if your calcium harness levels are too high? Well, if the calcium harness levels in your pool gets too high, the water will be hard. And the first sign is usually a cloudy pool. Now, normally you can clear a cloudy pool with pool shock or water clarifier. But if the cloudiness doesn't go away after shocking your pool even a couple of times, you could have too much calcium in the water. And you may also notice a buildup of calcium on pool surfaces. So here's how to lower calcium harness in your pool. Number one, test your water source. If the calcium level is high, try using a hose filter to keep some of those minerals out. Then you can drain some of your pool water and replace it with fresh filtered water. This is also called dilution. Number two, use pool flocculant. You can try using pool flock to clump up the excess calcium. And once the clumps form and fall to the bottom of your pool, you need to manually vacuum them out through your filter's waste port. Now be sure that your filter has a waste setting before using pool flux. And just note, calcium that's already dissolved in the water will not be affected by flocculant. It only affects calcium solids that haven't been dissolved in solution. Yet. Number three, try muriatic acid. If draining and flock don't work, you can add muriatic acid as a last resort. Now it won't actually reduce your water's calcium harness levels, but it will help bring your pool water back into balance. Real quick before we continue, if you're looking for an easy to follow tutorial that'll answer all your pool questions, go check out our pool care handbook and video course. You'll get over 30 in-depth video lessons and a step-by-step -step downloadable guide covering everything you need to know about pool maintenance. It's packed with money-saving tips so you can save money and time keeping your swimming pool clean. This is the ultimate manual for every type of pool, including in-ground, above-ground, and in-text blow-up pools. And the best part is we always keep it up to date. So once you buy it, you have access to the latest and greatest version for life. So because you're watching this video, you can go to swimuniversity.com slash pool and use the promo code video. Okay, what if your calcium harness levels are too low? Well, low calcium levels means your water is soft and that can corrode parts of your pool. Soft water can dissolve concrete and plaster and corrode any metal parts submerged or touched by the water. Luckily, bringing the harness levels up is much easier than lowering it. All you need to do is add calcium harness increaser to your pool. Now be sure to carefully follow the instructions on the package for the best results. And to add the proper amount of harness increaser, you'll need to know your pool's volume. So be sure to check out our pool volume calculator video. Just know that the calcium that you add to your pool doesn't dissolve right away. It may take a while and the chemical can heat up when it comes in contact with water. So I recommend as always to wear protective gear when handling chemicals and be patient when adding calcium to the wall. Finally, how do you maintain the right calcium hardness levels? One, you wanna balance the water. Keeping a close eye on your pool chemistry will help you prevent problems related to calcium harness and a lot of other things as well. Number two, test your water frequently. This is especially important if you have hard water. Testing every week or two weeks will help you stay on top of any water chemistry imbalances. Be sure to use test strips or a liquid test kit that measures calcium hardness. And number three, address calcium hardness level problems early. Don't wait for water hardness to get out of hand before you try to fix it. 
soon as you see the levels getting close to the lower or upper limits of the right range for your pool, take action. This will save you from dealing with serious calcium buildup and pool damage. If there's a pool care topic you'd like us to cover in a future video, please leave a comment to let us know. And hit the like button below if you found this video helpful. If you want to learn more about pool maintenance and troubleshooting, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And check out the Pool Care Handbook and Video course at swimuniversity.com pool. Don't forget to enter the promo code video to get 10% off. That's it. Thanks again and happy swimming.